For this video focusing on an entrepreneur after World War II, I chose to focus on a lesser known individual, George de Mistral, though most people have heard about the company he established, Velcro. In 1941, he discovered on a hike with his dog that burrs in the wild from the burdock plant stuck both to his dog's fur and his clothing. This is a burdock burr plant as of July 3rd. The sticky seeds won't fully develop until the fall. Right now they're sort of encased in here, but you can peel them out and see the beginnings of such a seed. And in the fall they will develop into these. So if you look close, you can see little hundreds of little hooks and the purpose of those hooks is to attach the seed pod to a moving host until the host removes the pod or accidentally knocks it off, thus planting the seed. As kids, we used to go ahead and throw these at each other just for fun. Um, you will see they do stick to you just like Velcro. The downfall, though, is that with longer-haired dogs and cats, the burrs can entangle their hair, making it difficult to straighten. And the same principle that the burdock burr plant uses to attach and spread the seed pod applies to Velcro. You have hooks on the one end, loops on the other, and when you attach them, they go ahead and stick easily, and then they go ahead and peel off easily as well. Mestral was a born inventor. He filed for his first patent for a toy airplane at the age of 12. With his engineering background and his innovative mentality, Mestral took his natural discovery and spent 10 years designing and perfecting his man-made hook-and-loop fastener idea, acclaimed as the Zippolus Zipper, mainly because it was difficult to develop an economical way to manufacture the product on a mass scale. The principle is that thousands of tiny hooks will easily attach and unattach from thousands of tiny loops. He applied for a patent in 1951, which was accepted in 1955. He took out a $150,000 loan and started to sell his product through his company Velcro based in Switzerland, which is derived from the French words velour or velvet and crochet meaning hooks. In America, the Velcro company was trademarked in 1958. The company was not an immediate success, however. The CEO of Velcro companies today, Fraser Cameron, reflected about Mestral. He was not a guy who was inspired by business, he was inspired by science. But due to its revolutionary impact, other industries eventually caught on to the endless possibilities and Velcro became a multi-million dollar company. His original patent expired in 1979. The uses of Velcro are endless from clothing, shoes, gloves, zippers, office supplies, sporting equipment for instance. There are also varieties of hook and loop fasteners made from plastic and steel. Essential industries also use the design, including the automotive, aircraft, medical, and engineering industries. For just one example among too many to count, Neil Armstrong's spacesuit in the first moon landing utilized Velcro. Today, the Velcro company has developed over 35,000 products. As, as described on the Velcro website, George de Mestral will always be linked to Velcro's hook and loop fasteners, which started out as an annoyance on his pant leg and made it all the way to the moon. There are a number of man-made technologies that can be found in nature known as biomimicry as described on the Velcro website looking to nature for inspiration and creating man-made innovations leveraging the principles of nature. I was surprised to discover recently that an insect called Isocoleopatrostus uses miniature gears in its back legs in order to jump when it is young and developing. Gregory Sutton reported, We usually think of gears as something that we see in human-designed machinery, but we found that that is only because we didn't look hard enough. 
Some other inventions derived from nature include sonar, utilizing sound waves to detect objects underwater, known to be used by dolphins, suction cups used by the octopus, and efficient flight derived from various birds, insects, and even manta rays. Nature certainly demonstrates that in the end, God is the first and greatest inventor.